You would think by now I would always remember how hard it is to get videos recorded when I have family visiting. Yay. So I do apologize for some missing content lately, but we are back on track. We are back to reviewing some random toys I have pulled from the shelves. And today, maybe not particularly random, but I do feel the need to talk about the Combiner War Breakdown Mold. As you can see, he is something of the G1's vehicle mode. He is something of a Lamborghini Diablo, a little modified in order to avoid, you know, the pesky copyright lawsuits. But it is one of my favorite vehicles of all time. So seeing it nice and updated like this, it's uh, kind of a cool thing. I really dig the vehicle. It's cast in kind of an off-white plastic, more toward the cream color, honestly. It honestly looks like it's all white and spent some time in the in the sun. But trust me, this is the, this is the intended color. He is decoed very nicely with some dark blue trim all the way around. Some of it cheated with a little bit of molded plastic, but you can't really tell, so good on you, Hasbro. Black wheels are accented by silver rims. Love to see those painted in. On the hood, you have the red that the G1 toy was known for, along with the Decepticon sigil, proudly displayed there in the front, as well as silver acting as what I assume are headlights, but man, that's some interesting shape for headlights. I almost thought they were forward guns for a long time, but hey... They are what they are, you know? It's your imagination. They are whatever you make of them. And I guess these silver down here is going to be the turn signals, I assume. Uh, as usual for these, you have some semblance of molding in the back for brake lights and etc. But no actual paint to actually uh, make that happen. We'll see. For some reason, the plastic on the spoiler, a little bit brighter than the rest of the toy. Kind of weird. Don't know why. And of course you have the black on the windshields as well as 15 racing across the front. I don't know what 15 racing is. I assume it is the one that comes after 14 racing. It's the only guess I have. So yeah, the vehicle itself is extremely sleek, very narrow profile, very cool looking all the way around. Does he roll? Not especially, but that might be a mistransformation on my part. He's got some parts that kind of grind down on the bottom. It's unfortunate. But he does look at least cool. He's got some pretty sparse detailing around the sides, but it is kind of a supercar, so I wouldn't expect too much heavy molding. He's got some vents in the back at least. And some nice heavy grooves along the sides. So what else can we do here besides roll him around? Well, he does have weapons that can mount up. For starters, we can plug on his hand-foot gun, and that forms something of the giant weapon apparatus he had in G1, something that the Stunticons had in particular. Ah, hang on, something else to talk about here in a second. Uh, yeah, it looks uh, appropriately ridiculous, because <laughs> these things look huge as weapons to begin with, and then you stick them on the roof of a car, and it's not even Mad Max. This is so beyond Thunderdome, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, but I did. Yeah, it's ludicrous, but hey, it's a level of ludicrous that can be kind of fun. What about his melee weapon? How does it look when it's attached to his vehicle mode? Absolutely stupid, but hey, it's there if you want it to be there. It's actually a special peg to fit into a slot on the side. You can mount on top too, but what is that going to do? Honestly. So, you have that at least. Let's go ahead and start transforming him in the various ways he can transform. I'm going to be a little bit weird about this and kind of go in whatever order makes the most sense. Which means the first thing that makes sense is to show off how he looks as a leg. Because that's the quickest one to get to from here. So just like that, it's already done. That's his leg mode. And it's a pretty solid thing. It's pretty much uh, akin to how the G1 toy would look as a leg. So, no real surprises here. It's a nice solid block, big thing in front for the knee. Yeah, I usually have him as a leg, so that works out pretty well. And, of course, yeah, that's a nice, heavy spring ratchet in there to actually create a knee joint. So, that's all well and good. Now, you see here the rear? You see how the rear section does not like to close up? Uh, apparently, a lot of Combiner War cars seem to suffer that problem. For now, we're going to open it up and 
extend the legs, they rotate out to the sides in order to form what would be the robot mode legs, but we're not quite done here. We'll go ahead and pretend like this is a right arm just for the sake of showing it off. Rotate that around. And now to the hand foot gun. I think these are dreadfully clever, by the way. The fact that these are not only hands, not only feet, and guns as well. This means that even if you only buy one toy out of the Combiner Wars set and have no intention of getting the full combiner, you can still use the part as some kind of accessory. In the arm mode, he's extremely solid. I'm actually quite happy with the way he looks here. Again, nothing really fancy. Like, anytime you get into the arm modes, I start worrying about, like, aerial bots and uh, first aid where you just have, like, the robot mode arm just kind of stuck off to the side, obviously. Luckily, Breakdown is tucked in nice and tight. He forms a nice block shoulder and a nice heavy forearm. So that's all well and good. You do have... Uh, you do have the 90 degree to the knee, uh, to these knees, which form his elbow. It's getting a little bit confusing with the anatomy on these things. And you do have some extra give with the hip joints. So he does have that going for him, you know, as well as bicep and all the little things the hand can do and all, etc. But that's what that arm mode looks like, just for the sake of being complete about this review. Let's finish it up. Let's get the waist rotated to the front, and now... We can flip down the spoiler and the toes to create the legs. Push all this up to get the hips in some sort of a balance. Now, uh, the next step, we need to get all this folded out. This is the weird section I never like. You have to fold the whole thing over. And it's a really specific little double hinge you have to work in order to get this thing all lined up. You're supposed to get this little tab into this little groove, and sometimes the toy can be a little bit stubborn about that. But once it's in, then you can fold up the arms, because they will help lock all those extra panels into place. Push that in, fold the arms down, and adjust a little bit. Just adjust, 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 adjust. Mm. And that gives us our Combiner Wars breakdown in his Full robot mode and I will uh, just slightly adjust the camera here so you can see him as he is the transformation on him like most of the combiner war toys not too difficult at all it does feel very G1 and almost classic style in a way where the parts just kind of go where they go uh, the, the parts of the vehicle make the parts of the robot everything feels nice solid chunky I kind of dig that it is a simple transformation experience, but hey, if that's what you're into, go ahead. Now let's take a look at the robot mode's head, where you can see, man, okay, that's that was unexpected. Let me get some lights down here a little bit, because he's got a big head. Well, wow, that's really bright. <laughs> okay, sorry if I'm blasting you out there, but I had to get his face completely in so you can actually see his eyes. His forehead is huge. <laughs> it really obstructs his eyes in the, you know, when, when you're trying to get the light to show them all. But yeah, needless to say, he is G1 Breakdown very much. Of all the Combiner War toys, I think he sticks to the uh, block head shape that most of those figures in G1 had to begin with the most. So he does come off looking very G1 in many ways, and that could be good, that could be bad. All right, so that's done. Let's get the lights back to normal position. Let's stop making the white balance on my camera go insane. Proportionally, this guy is not my favorite of the Combiner Wars. Um, his transformation comes off a lot more simple than some of the others, but he also comes off very blocky, like very like G1 chunk blocky. And in ways, it does match how his G1 toy worked, but in others, it's just... Mm, like usually they update the designs a little bit like you look at dead end and he's got all these different rounded shapes to him and there's nothing like you know like 90 degree angle about him but his breakdown is very much about 90 degree angles and just block shapes and i like big solid looking toys but this does not quite work in that you know he's got a wide torso and very thin arms very heavy legs 
it's a little bit weird proportionally, which is kind of strange. But uh, that aside, you do see a lot of dark blue has integrated into his white, which does create a much more interesting color pattern and does give you that G1 look that we're looking for here. A lot of silver in the chest details and a little bit of purple showing through for his midriff just because that's where his combiner wore socket peg what are we what are we calling that big block he combines with never mind it's not important he's got a little tiny decepticon symbol painted right there on his abdomen <laughs> right right in like the spot where optimus gets injured all the time because he got injured in the movie there and da, 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 da. but yeah you can see a lot not all of it is paint either so we've given away to a lot of trans or a lot of uh, solid dark blue plastic as well so everything going quite well here uh, articulation wise he does have a ball jointed head so full rotation around there ball jointed shoulders which do get obstructed by the backpack and this little top piece of kibble i really wish this could fold down or fold out or something but unfortunately it's kind of stuck there and can get in the way of the outward arm movement he does have a double jointed elbow that's always cool as well as a ball joint to rotate around and do with as you please the waist does rotate around, so that's good. The hips are ball jointed and have good range, but they are on this weird, like, like, weird, like, double, triple up hinge thing here, where, you know, that's how the vehicle kind of gets its uh, profile, and that's kind, that's where the hips come from. I've seen these hips done over the years. Uh, I've only seen one occurrence where I actually like them because it's very easy to imbalance and rock the hips, but in other in other news, you know, you know, Breakdown is a heck of a dancer because of them. However, as an action figure posing, it is a little bit weird. Uh, let's see, we have a thigh joint. That's good. We have 90 degree knees, as discussed. And then we have these feet that can go like poo, 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 poo. And that's about all they can do. So you do have a decent level of articulation. So I'm going to give him kudos for that. Now, beyond that... He does have his weapon, which can be mounted rifle-esque, because it does have a little bit of a gun barrel there on the front, just in case you want to use it as some kind of melee weapon. But hey, it has a gigantic blade painted on it, so why would you use it for anything else? Especially when you have this thing to be the gun. It's far more ridiculous as a gun. And also, there is a peg on the back, which lets you mount it just in case you want to store it away. This is actually for the Sunstreaker repaint of the toy, so he could have his big silver engine overhead thing that he does. But it also lets you give him some extra storage for what is usually a very big and cumbersome style of uh, accessory. So, there we have it. Combiner Wars Breakdown. Not my favorite of the figures. I'm not a fan of the proportions. I'm not a fan of the blocky aesthetic you know it does not feel like it was as refined or smoothed out as the other combiner war toys so that's an unfortunate detriment to what is otherwise a decent figure he's not bad on his own but you know aside from things like you know the weird hip transformation and a little bit of a finicky set of hinges to create his upper torso but beyond that Compared to the other Combiner War toys, he does feel a little bit weaker than the rest. So I would probably chalk him up as my least favorite in the Combiner War line overall. That is to say, he's still a decent toy. There's no major grievances with him. It's more of a, I'm not quite feeling his aesthetic. You might, I don't. <laughs>